one do you think would last longer? A light bulb or an LED? LED. 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 It seems like common sense that the LED would last a lot longer, but did you know at a firehouse station in California, there's a light bulb that's been continuously on since 1901. <laughs> has its own backup battery and backup generator. It has been continuously lit for 122 years, which is over a million hours. This seems weird, though, because I replaced many incandescent light bulbs in my lifetime, especially in my own household, but every time I get an LED, I've never had to replace it. Back in the day, manufacturers would want to make their light bulbs, or they would innovate their light bulbs to be, you know, last longer and be better for the consumer. However, um, <clears throat> however, light bulb manufacturers, my light bulb manufacturers group together to produce light bulbs that were more economical for themselves rather than more productive for their consumers. And this is known as plan obsolescence. Today, I'm going to talk to you about light bulb manufacturer, light bulb manufacturing industry, how they created the strategy of plan obsolescence and how the strategy is still employed in our market today. So light bulbs in the early 20th century, or light bulbs were created by Thomas Edison in the late 19th century. In the early 20th, 20th century, um, Many, many manufacturers began testing new filament materials, wattages, power to the bulb, and gases that filled the bulb. They wanted to innovate their light bulbs to last longer and be better for the consumer. Uh, the NPR, the, Na the National Public Radio, published, an, uh, published a conversation claiming that many manufacturers were able to innovate their light bulbs that lasted, uh, that lasted 1,200 hours in the early 1900s, all the way up to as high as 2,800 hours in, by the late 1920s. However, in another article published by IEEE, I'll get into that later, one of these companies, Osram, a German light bulb company, experienced a huge drop in domestic sales, the domestic sales from 63 million light bulbs to just 28 million the following year. So this poses a big issue. The new lifetime of light bulbs were lasting too long. Consumers would only buy a light bulb maybe once a year or every once every two years. And now the light bulb manufacturer, company, manufacturer companies were losing money due to their light bulbs uh, lasting too long. So to combat these decreasing sales, a global light bulb alliance was created. The New Yorker magazine posts an article that tells the story of Osram's ambitions to control the manufacturing light bulb market. Just before Christmas in 1924, uh, Germany's Osram, Tokyo Electric from Tokyo, General Electric of America and the Netherlands Philips Electric, among others, met at a conven met at a convention in Switzerland to form. It's always in the, Switzerland to form the <laughs> Phoebus Cartel. Uh, <laughs> the name Phoebus comes from the Greek goddess or the Greek god of light. These companies came together to regulate the world's supply of light bulbs. Each company dominated over their territory in the world, and they came to an agreement to reduce their light bulb to just one thousand hours. But this poses more questions. How do you control each company, or how do you regulate each company so that they're compliant to this 1,000-hour limit? Well, to ensure that each company was compliant, samples of bulbs were regularly sent to a testing facility shown, like, like here in this photo. Uh, this comes from the Philips company in Netherlands. If a company's bulb lasted longer than 1,000 hours, they were fined. The Times Magazine posted an article stating a total amount of fines were given in 1930s were given, uh, the total amount of fines were given, in, or the total amount of fines that were given were 304,000 Swiss francs in 1930, which totals to 6.1 million USD today. Who did they pay the fines to? To the different light bulb manufacturing companies. Who was the question from you? Wow. So now the second question is, how did they reverse the, the innovation of their light bulbs. They wanted their light bulbs to last longer, and now how do they make them last shorter? Well, engineers and researchers had to re-innovate their bulbs to meet this new lifetime requirement. In another article posted by IEEE, they claim that manufacturers began replacing their filaments with new tungsten carbon alloys or other alloys that would burn easier and thus reduce the lifetime of their light bulbs. They also tested different shapes and the arrangement of the filaments so that their light bulbs could meet this 1,000 hour uh, requirement. Another notable thing that manufacturers did was they increased the voltage of their light bulbs. So since they brought in more power, this would also cause your filaments to burn a lot hotter and thus they would break faster. They wouldn't last as long. We could see 
in this graph here that light bulbs from the mid 1920s to the mid 1930s did in fact all be compliant to the Phoebus cartel and, and only lasted 1,000 hours, which is this line right here. All light bulbs by the mid 1930s were only lasting 1,000 hours. Um, also, the cartel did not just the the cartel also didn't just standardize the hours. They also standardized this screw type. Every single light bulb sold around the world globally has this screw type, this E34 screw type on their light bulb. This was one of the biggest claims by the Phoebus cartel. They said that they wanted to standardize the light bulb for everyone, not just make it, make it more economical to their business model. Um, the cartel was eventually disbanded by the end of the 1930s due to World War II. That gives an issue for, uh, for that makes virtual affairs uh, virtually impossible. But although, although the Phoebus cartel is noted as the first instance of plant obsolescence, its practices are still being used today. As many you, uh, many of you may know from more recent times, Apple's iOS update in 2017 left consumers with obsolete devices. Another NPR article from 2021 states that the software update in 2017 consumed a significant amount of battery life and also slowed down the Apple's iPhones. And many users claim that their older generations of iPhones began performing slower until their devices were deemed impractical by their users. Uh, the NPR continues to state that the U.S. District Judge Edward Devillian in San Jose, California accepted a preliminary class action lawsuit and in March of 2020, Apple did lose and agreed to pay $113 million to settle this lawsuit. That's only $25 per person, so it's not too much in their bank account, but they did in fact admit that their update slowed down their phones. And this is seen as another instance of planned obsolescence. So much like the Phoebus cartel, this, the practice of making objects obsolete over time to produce sales is a common practice by many companies throughout America's history. And the Phoebus cartel was successful in standardizing light bulbs that had a shorter lifetime, which generated an increase of revenue for its partner companies. So now I ask you one more question. What objects in your household can you recognize is also a, a product of planned obsolescence. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, diggity damn. Who pointed at me?